very often as an engineer we're solving structural problems using pieces of material in bending, like that, torsion, or sometimes a strut in compression. As you see, a thin piece of material like this is rubbish in that respect, but very often engineers are using metal sections. Tubes are especially good in twisting. They're good because they're moving the material away from the central axis, so they're very good at resisting bending. We all collectively consume far too much energy, more than we can make sustainably. The biggest use of energy is actually embodied in the goods that we buy. And aluminium has 40 kilowatt hours per kilogram of energy. That's four times as much as there is in petrol, for example. The fuel in the solid rocket boosters on the space shuttle was powdered aluminium. So it takes an enormous amount of energy to make aluminium. And that is the difficulty which we're setting out to solve. So the best way of saving energy is to pick the biggest lump of waste energy and the biggest lump is embodied energy in materials. The idea of beams started in the winter of 2014 when a fence panel in my garden fell down. Uh, there was quite a storm and the weather was pretty unpleasant. My neighbour very kindly pointed out to me and said, don't worry Nick, you can fix it in the summer when the weather's a bit better. I went to fix it, but by that time, a bush had grown a limb across where the fence panel went, so I couldn't get it in there. So what I did was I cut the limb off. This was the original piece of wood. It turned from a relatively flexible piece of material to an incredibly strong piece of material. And when I started to look at it and look at the structure of it, I began to wonder, why is it that shape? Wood like this is an engineering optimized structure in a way that engineers can only dream about. How did the tree know to make the structure that shape? And here's the answer. Wood is essentially a dead material. The actual living part of the tree is called the cambium and it's a, just a one cell thick layer. So if this is the wood of a tree, the cambium, and this may cause some distress to people who've had unfortunate experiences in immigration, etc., is like a thin uh, coating over the outside. And on the outside of that, it grows a protective layer, which is the bark. So there is my tree. Now, let's remove the bark for the time being. Let us say that under the loads of the wind, the tree is flexing and more of the flex is coming from this point here. The cambium is being stretched there and it stimulates it to lay down more wood. So this part becomes thickened and it knows exactly which direction the stress is going and generates the structure of the wood so that the bending strength becomes even all the way along. So this is nature's optimized material. Now very often with timber, what they do is they take a tree and they cut it up into planks. And then of course you're losing that structure. So this round wood pole is a better structural uh, piece of material than uh, timber. When wood dries out, it halves its weight and doubles its strength. That will actually support my entire weight This is a piece of birch, and birch tends to have the knots staggered rather than being opposite each other, so you don't get the large kind of bulge that you get with Forsythia. Sycamore, beautiful white colored wood, and that tends to produce these opposed knots. That you can see is more flexible um, as woods go. Beech has this beautiful yellow color, if you want a rigid structure, then the birch and the beech are very good. Ash, that's very traditional for structural strength. So ash wood is used in um, a lot of things. Again, a bit more flexible than the, the birch and the beech. Hazel is in effect a, uh, a bush, but it does seem to be similar to birch and beech. And then finally willow, which is a much less dense wood. So that's uh, very light, uh, tends to produce very nice round sections. It's known to be you know, cricket bats, so it's uh, very resistant to splitting, etc. It turns out that the structural performance of wood is nearly as good as metals 
when they're used in sections. One of the processes that we've pioneered is taking the middle out of the material, which produces the weight of the material far more than it reduces the strength. So the strength to weight of the resulting material is very much better and in fact is competitive with the best engineering materials that you can get. This process is done while the wood is green. It dries out very, very quickly. Now normally when you dry wood, the process is called seasoning because it takes several seasons. The wood shrinks as it dries and if the outside shrinks more than the inside that will cause it to split. But if you haven't got the inside there then first of all it's drying partly from the inside and secondly it won't split. So we've got there an extremely light and strong piece of structural material. Really quite remarkable. Bicycles are already associated with sustainability and sustainable transport, but also you can buy bicycles made out of the very high spec engineering materials. Scandium aluminium alloys, mar-aging steels, titanium, carbon fibre, the very best things that engineers have at their fingertips, and we're putting this material head to head with that. This is the Beams Betula bicycle. It's made from birchwood, which came from Wickham Common in Hampshire. I was involved in a heathland clearance project and uh, there was a lot of birch coming out of there. Uh, we've also got some ash up here and the handlebars are willow. We've gone for um, wooden forks here, so the steerer, the, the whole structure down here is wood. We've used uh, conventional bearings inside that. That uh, is to be tested to the European standard for bicycles. So these three tubes here are hollow sections and uh, for that reason the frame is weighing about four pounds. It's got a lot of internal damping. You know, it flexes but uh, it also absorbs the energy internally. The joints here have been reinforced with natural fibres. We've used hemp and flax fibres and then it's been finished with this uh, lashing style which uh, compacts the fibre down onto the joint and provides the finish for the bike. This is also impregnated with a bio-derived epoxy resin. We're looking at using sustainable, uh, naturally produced materials. The finish on this is beeswax You've got a riding experience which is within the envelope of a high quality bike but with differences which we think add value. There's about one and a half kilograms of carbon involved in that that's been sequestered from the atmosphere um, and that was made from about four and a half, five kilograms of carbon dioxide. So that is trapped within the structure for the life of the bicycle. Beams is a social enterprise with three objectives. The first one is reduction of energy usage to within the amounts that we can sustainably manage. The second, to provide a catalyst for wildlife diversity. So by providing the means of returning woodland to coppice management, we can ensure that the wildlife diversity benefits of coppice woodland are maintained and spread back throughout the country. And thirdly, Beams is all about using a local material for local structural purposes worked by local people. So we're going to be producing high well-being jobs in forestry and in people making beautiful products from a beautiful material.